Welcome back, engineering enthusiasts, to another electrifying episode of Engineering Academy. Today, we're delving into the fundamental force that powers our modern world, electricity. From the microscopic dance of electrons to the awe-inspiring applications in technology and beyond, let's illuminate the mysteries of electricity together on this electrifying journey. And remember, if you're shocked by any of these revelations, just consider it a current event. Let's start with the basics. An ion is like that friend who's always either gaining or losing something. When an atom loses an electron, it becomes a positively charged ion, aka the I'm feeling positive cation. Conversely, when an atom gains an electron, it becomes a negatively charged ion, aka the I've got an extra negative anion. This whole electron swapping thing is the fundamental principle behind electricity. And you thought your friend's drama was shocking. So how does one atom pass an electric charge to another atom? That's where free ions and connect conductivity of a material plays a part. Free ions in the context of conductivity are charged particles that are not bound within the structure of a material. In conductive materials such as metals or electrolytes, free ions play a crucial role in facilitating the flow of electric current. In metals, for example, free electrons are responsible for conducting electricity. In electrolytes such as salt water or solutions of ions, both positive and negative ions can move freely in response to an electric field, enabling the material to conduct electricity. The presence of free ions significantly enhances the conductivity of these materials compared to insulators, where electrons are tightly bound and cannot move freely. Understanding the behavior of free ions is essential in designing and optimizing conductive materials for various applications in electronics, chemistry, and engineering. An easy way to think about this is Think of free ions in a solution like people in a crowded room. In a crowded room, people can move around freely, bumping into each other and transferring energy. It's like a chaotic dance floor where everyone's trying not to step on each other's toes. Similarly, in a solution containing free ions, the ions can move around freely, carrying electric charge and facilitating the flow of electricity just as people can pass energy and information by interacting in a crowded room, free ions enable the transmission of electrical energy through a conductive solution. It's like a lively party where the ions mingle and dance to the beat of electricity. In the real world, ions play a crucial role in conductivity, as seen in phenomena like saltwater conductivity. When salt, such as sodium chloride, NaCl, dissolves in water, it breaks down into ions, sodium ions, Na+, and chloride ions, Cl-. These ions enable the flow of electric current through the water, making it conductive. This property finds application in various fields from electrolysis processes for water purifications to the functioning of biological systems like nerve impulses. In the game Final Fantasy VII, the character known as Barrett Wallace yields a weapon called the gun arm, which is mechanically enhanced with electrical capabilities. Barrett's attacks often involve shooting bursts of electricity at enemies or charging up powerful electrical blasts to unleash devastating attacks. The visual effects accompanied by these attacks typically depict bolts of lightning or electric currents emanating from Barrett's gun arm illustrating the concept of electric current flow. This portrayal showcases how electricity is incorporated into games combat mechanics, allowing players to harness the power of electrical energy to defeat enemies and progress through the game. Next, let's move into the topic of conductivity. Conductivity is the measure of material's ability to conduct electric current. It's a fundamental property in the realm of electrical engineering and plays a crucial role in various applications, 
From the designing of circuits to powering electronic devices, materials with high conductivity such as metals of copper and aluminum allow electrons to flow freely, facilitating efficient transmission of electricity. These are called conductors. On the other hand, insulating materials like rubber or plastic have low conductivity, impeding the flow of electrons. Understanding conductivity is essential for optimizing the performance and efficiency of electrical systems, ensuring reliable operation and safety across a wide range of industries and technologies. In order to understand it easier, let's use an example. Think of a conductor in electricity like a highway for cars. Just as a highway allows cars to flow freely from one point to another, a conductor allows electric current to flow easily through it. A real world example of conductors is the wiring system in buildings. Copper wires are commonly used as conductors to transmit electricity from power sources such as electrical outlets or circuit breakers to electrical devices such as lights, appliances, and electronics. These conductors allow the flow of electric current through them, enabling the transfer of energy to power various electrical systems and devices within homes, offices, factories, and other structures. In many strategy or simulation games, conductors play a vital role in managing resources and facilitating gameplay mechanics. For instance, in the game Factorio, con conveyor belts act as a conductors, efficiently transporting resources like iron ore, coal, and copper plates from one location to another within the player's factory. These conveyor belts enable the flow of materials through the production process, much like conductors facilitate the flow of electricity in real-world circuits. Players must strategically plan and optimize their conveyor belt layouts to ensure smooth resource distribution and efficient factory operation, making conductors a fundamental aspect of gameplay. The opposite of a conductor is an insulator. An insulator is a material that does not conduct electricity well because its atoms tightly hold onto their electrons, making it difficult for electrons to move freely through the material. In an insulator, the outermost electrons of each atom are strongly attracted to the positively charged nucleus, creating a stable configuration. At the atomic level, insulators have electrons that are bound tightly to their respective atoms, forming covalent or ionic bonds. In covalent bonds, atoms share electrons, while in ionic bonds, electrons are transferred from one atom to another, resulting in positively charged ions or cations and negatively charged ions and ions that are held together by electrostatic forces. Because the electrons in insulators are not free to move, insulating materials have very high electrical resistance. When an electric field is applied, as in the case of trying to conduct electricity through an insulator, the tightly bound electrons are not able to move easily, limiting the flow of electric current. Common examples of insulators include rubber, plastic, and glass. These materials are widely used in electrical insulation to prevent the flow of electricity where it is not desired, such as in wires, cables, and electronic devices, helping to ensure the safety and proper functioning of electrical systems. Sticking with our earlier highway analogy, Imagine a highway system where lanes that are separated by tall impenetrable walls. These walls prevent cars from crossing over to adjacent lanes. Similarly, insulators in the field of electricity are materials that prevent the flow of electric current. They act like barriers blocking the movement of electrons, much like the walls on the highway prevent cars from changing lanes. This analogy helps illustrate how insulators like the walls on the highway inhibit the flow of electricity by keeping electrons contained within a specific pathway. 
A common real-world example of insulators is the plastic coating on electrical wires. Inside power cords or electrical cables, the conductive metal wires are surrounded by a la layer of insulating materials usually made of rubber or plastic. This insulating layer serves to prevent the flow of electric current outside of the wire, keeping the electricity contained within the wire and reducing the risk of electrical shock or short circuits. Without this insulating layer, electricity could potentially leak out, posing a safety hazard. In the game Minecraft, players can create electrical circuits using redstone, a fictional material that mimics electricity. In this circuit, insulators are represented by blocks that do not conduct redstone signals, such as blocks of wood, glass, or other non-conductive materials. When players want to direct or contain the flow of redstone energy within their circuits, they use these insulating blocks to create barriers that prevent the signal from traveling where it is not intended to go. Insulators in Minecraft serve a similar purpose to real-life insulating materials by controlling the flow of electricity within electrical systems created by the player. Voltage is the driving force that pushes electrical charges, such as electrons and free ions, throughout a conductor. In conductors such as metals, voltage creates an electric field that causes the free electrons to move in a particular direction. When a voltage is applied across a conductor, the electrons experience a force due to the electric field. This force causes the electrons to drift in the direction opposite to the electric field, resulting in a net flow of electrons, which constitutes an electric current. The greater the, the voltage applied, the stronger the electric field and the faster the electrons move. In the case of electrolytes, which contain free ions, a similar principle applies. When a voltage is applied across an electrolyte, the free ions within the solution experience a force due to the electric field. Positive ions, or cations, are attracted towards the negatively charged electrode, or cathode, while negatively, negative ions, or anions, are attracted towards the positively charged electrode, or anode. This movement of ion constitutes an electric current. In summary, voltage provides the energy necessary to overcome the resistance of a conductor and drive the movement of electric charges, whether they are electrons in metallic conductors or ions in electrolytes. To better understand, let's use an analogy involving water flow to explain voltage and current. Imagine you have a water tank placed on a raised platform, and there's a pipe connected to the bottom of the tank. The height of the tank represents the voltage, while the water flowing through the pipe rep represents the electrical current. Now the taller the water tank is filled, the more energy that is stored in the water due to increased amount of water and the gravitational force acting on it. Similarly, a higher voltage indicates more energy stored in the electrical system. When you open the valve at the bottom of the tank, water flows out through the pipe due to the force of gravity. The rate at which water flows depends on the height of the water column, or the voltage, and the size of the pipe, the conductor. Likewise, in an electrical circuit, Current flows due to the voltage difference between two points, and the rate of flow depends on the voltage and the resistance of the conductors. A common real-world example of voltage is seen in household electrical outlets, which typically provide around 120 volts in the United States. This voltage rep represents the potential difference between the live and neutral wires within the outlet. When you plug in an electrical device, like a phone charger, the voltage difference between these wire, wires powers the device by providing the necessary electrical energy for the flow of electrons from the outlet through the device and back again, enabling it to function. 
This example highlights how voltage is critical for powering various electrical devices in our daily lives. In the game City Skylines, voltage is an essential aspect of managing the city's infrastructure. Players must establish and maintain power grids to supply electricity to buildings, industries, and services within their city. They start by building power plants such as coal, nuclear, wind, or solar, which generates electricity. Voltage is not directly measured in the game, but players must ensure that their power grids can handle the electrical demand of their growing city. They lay down power lines and connect them strategically to distribute electricity efficiently. Voltage fluctuations caused by sudden increases in demand or power plant malfunctions can lead to blackouts in unhappy citizens. Managing voltage and ensuring a stable power supply are critical for maintaining a thriving and functional city in City Skylines 2. Current is like the traffic on the Electron Highway, where electrons zoom around like cars on a freeway. It's measured in amperes and shows how fast those little electrons are zipping along a circuit. Now, when it comes to current, there are two types, DC or direct current and AC or alternating current. Think of DC as the straightforward one-way street, while AC is like the twisty, turny roller coaster ride that keeps electrons guessing which way to go next. In a direct current circuit, electrons flow continuously in one direction, typically from the negative terminal to the positive terminal of a voltage source, such as a battery or a power supply. This flow of electrons constitutes the electric current. This consistent flow of electrons is what powers electronic devices and electrical systems in various applications, from small electronics to larger scale solar farms. In an alternating current, or AC current, electrons oscillate back and forth periodically changing direction in response to the alternating voltage supplied by the power supply. This oscillation occurs at a specific frequency, typically 50 or 60 hertz depending on the region. Unlike direct current or DC, where electrons flow continuously in one direction, in AC, the direction of electron flow reverses at regular intervals. This alternating flow of electrons enables the transmission of electrical energy over long distances and allows for the operation of various electrical devices and appliances that rely on changing electric fields, like lights, appliances, and heating systems for your house. Consider electrical currents as the flow of people through a crowded hallway. In this analogy, the hallway represents a wire or conductor, while the people represent electrons. Just as people move from one end of the hallway to the other, electrons move through the wire from the power source to the load. The rate at which people pass at specific points in the hallway is akin to the amount of electric charge passing through a particular point in a circuit per unit of time. So just as the flow of people can vary depending on factors like the width of the hallway and the speed at which they move, electrical currents vary based on factors such as the conductivity of the wire and the voltage applied to the circuit. In conclusion, electricity powers the modern world, from the smallest electronic devices to the vast infrastructure that keeps society running smoothly. By understanding the principles of electricity, we unlock the potential for innovation and advancement in countless fields, from renewable energy to telecommunications and beyond. Thank you for joining me today, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and join our Patreon for bonus material on all our subjects. Have a great week, and don't forget to never stop learning.